Siamo live. Ciao, benvenuti a tutti. Welcome to this uh, last edition of Creative Mornings uh, before our summer vacation, hopefully. Uh, as usual, I want to thank our uh, main, main sponsor, MailChimp, and dedicate uh, a thought to our free communities in uh, Ukraine. Uh, last week, uh, we heard of them and they are uh, right, thankfully. But I also uh, want to take this moment to think about every community in the world that is striving for uh, a better situation, for a better life, every creative in the world that is trying to do something and to create a better world for everyone. As you know, Creative Mornings is a community, is a huge community around the world. <coughs> we are more than 200 uh, cities in the world right now, and almost everyone is having, holding their events today. So we are somehow all together also with the other communities. <coughs> I also want to thank you, our uh, team, especially uh, Laís and Nicola, who are here, uh, but also Silvia and Paola, and hopefully the next people who will come uh, in the next season. Uh, today, we really want to thank Sanjiti, who, um, in, in the person of Andrea, for example, who is here. <laughs> and you cannot see, but you, you will see him in, in other occasions. And, um, <clears throat> Sanjiti is a great design studio, but for Creative Mornings is also a great group of friends because they helped us creating, recreating our community after the COVID uh, stop. So Sanjiti has been our new home for these people from these, uh, for these uh, uh, starting months of the new community after the lockdown. So. I really want to thank you all, thank Tangiti and the people of Tangi on Tangi the, the, uh, ah, yes, that are here. <laughs> um, <Ooh. sorry. laughs> so Andrea, you can come here, for example, so I can thank you in front of the camera, for example. <laughs> thank you. will go on, we will see uh, again together in uh, November, because we will have uh, a, an event together with our Munich community, so let's see uh, again in November here. I also want to thank our uh, new sponsor, Newbo, they have a, a network of uh, um, smart working uh, places for everyone, and we are going to hold some of our events uh, in their places too. Next one will be in Ostello Bello. So I will see you in the, at the end of August, at the end of starting of September for the new event. So this is the manifesto of Creative Mornings. You already saw it many times, but just for this time, I want to read it all together. So I don't know if someone wants to read a couple of lines with me. I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We are here to support you, celebrate with you, and encourage you to make the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We, we believe in giving and them. We believe in face-to-face -face connection, so the one we are developing here, in learning from others what we will do with Bianca, in short, in hearts and high five. We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose, confidence that they will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. Thank you for being here. The, th the um, topic of this month is uh, spirituality. Um, Jedda chapter to this month uh, exploration of this uh, theme and by Jan Yeltsin illustrated the theme. Spirituality is a word that comes from Latin, from, uh, the, uh, from a word that means uh, air, breath, and wind. 
And it's really interesting because for us, spirituality is also something that runs very deep inside us, but also air runs very deep inside us. And air can be really strong, really difficult, a strong wind, for example, but it's also something deeply necessary to us to survive, and not just to survive, but to live. And this is also what spirituality can mean. But with Bianca, who I promised to come here, please, uh, we will explore a specific, uh, a specific problem of spirituality, which is our digitalized world and the relationship between the digital and spirituality. Do they have a link? Do they have something in common? Do they can work together or whatever? So welcome to Bianca Bonetti. Thank you. Okay, let's change uh, everything. Good. Well, first of all, good morning all, and thank, thank you for being here. Of course, thanks for the morning Milan team. I'm super happy to meet all of you in person. And the most important thing, all of you that came today, this super hot, crazy Friday. <laughs> so I'm super excited to be here today because it was very important to read the manifesto again. I started participating in Credit Morning 11 years ago in Geneva, and uh, the community has always welcomed me. I was able to find some very old pictures of B19 in Credit Morning Geneva. And then when I moved to Rome, they also welcomed me. So it's really important as a family to be here and for me to be on stage kind of today. So, well, uh, I just wanted to, to thank uh, all of you to be part of this amazing community. So a few months ago, uh, Maria Claire called me and she invited me to be a speaker uh, for this theme, spirituality, and we're brainstorming about it. We're talking about what is spirituality, how, what we can talk about, and on and And the first thing that comes out, it's, it's actually this book um, concerning the spiritual in art. Uh, this book was released by Kandinsky in uh, uh, 1910, so the very early years of the 20th century. And it's a philosophical book that is not talking about art in particular, but it's talking about spirituality. So what happens is that the artist presents itself as a prophet of a new epoch, of a spiritual epoch. But why? Let's contextualize it. So we're, we're talking about this early years of the 20th century where there was this crisis of religion and collapse of science, morality, Everything is collapsing around him, right? So it's the time for the contemporary man to stop looking in the exteriority of, uh, of the world and start looking within what's happening inside himself, right? So what I can get from this, um, from this experience is that it's, it's pieces of art are are abstract, but it means that it, it does not come from the mediation, from the rational, it really comes from the inside. My personal reading of, of, this, of this book, of this philosophical text, is that when everything around you collapses, what's, what's inside you? And if you think about it, what was your first encounter with your own spirituality? For me, it was with mathematics. I was, uh, I was 13 years old when I decided to study math, then I continued into my classical studies, classical, uh, for the one part of Italian means literature studies uh, here in Italy. And, uh, and then when I was 19, I moved to Geneva to study math. I set out to study this amazing subject that I love, and people, people would, would ask me, why, why did you study math? Like, are you coming from another planet? Why are you studying math? <laughs> And my answer will always be, because it's pure order, it's beautiful, and there's always a solution. For me, this was so magical, right? And then I'm, I'm in Geneva, this beautiful new life, meeting a lot of people, and I look at my life, and there's, there are two different 
kind of reality. There is this abstract reality where everything is just perfect. It makes total sense, right? You put this, this, and this ingredient, and you get an amazing solution. And then there is real life reality, right? And it's a mess. There are expectations, emotions, uh, people. People, they do what they're not supposed to be doing in your abstract dogma rule universe, right? Uh, so for me, it was like I was looking at my life, there was this huge rupture between the two universes I was living in. I think this was for me the first, really the first time I was asking myself, okay, what is spiritual for me? And this in my life led me towards art in this particular moment of life. In general, in our culture, spirituality is often associated with religion. So I wanted to uh, here showcase a development of religion throughout all the history of humankind. And what is interesting is what, as Arari says, religion is our greatest invention because the truly unique trait of a sapiens is our ability to create and believe fiction, right? So animals, they use their communication system to talk to each other about an objective reality, so what's happening. We use our communication system to create new realities. Our, if I can make an example, money, for example, right? So there is this objective reality that is what's happening in real life, subjective reality, what's happening inside me, and then intersubjective reality. So we decide that this is real. Italy is real today, right? So what, let's say, what Arari says is that religion is any system of norms and values that is founded on supernatural laws. These laws can be divine or they can be natural. And now that all these divine laws are going into eclipse, let's say, in, this, uh, in the last decades, in the last centuries, there are other new religions that are taking more space and they will, come, they will become more and more prominent in the next few years. If we think about it today, the most interesting place for religion is actually the Silicon Valley of this new techno-religions where, how can I say, it's a, they propose solutions, they propose um, paradise on earth thanks to new technologies. So we are, all connected, and I decided to put a small star here because um, all represents two thirds of the human population on Earth. Let's not forget that we live on the lucky side of the world. Uh, anyway, we are all connected, but what does it mean physically? How are we connected? We're connected by cables. Um, in 1858, Two steam powered ships met in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, physically, and they connected the first huge cable of about like 4,000 kilometers that was connecting Europe with North America. And then the Queen sends a message of congratulations, great, we're, we're now connected. And this message took around 17 hours per letter to deliver on the other side of the ocean. So we don't think, most, most of the time, we don't think about it because we, are, we live in this wireless world. We have smartphones, we have Wi-Fi, but we're physically connected by, by this cable, right? So we are barely aware that this exists. And what I wanted to, yeah, this are the map of the cables. <laughs> what I wanted to, um, to highlight here is the current speed of these cables. This, the information that travels through these cables travels at the speed light, so it's super fast. It's super fast. We're talking, uh, we're connected and we're fast. Speaking about speed, um, I'm a speed skier. It's a, it's a great discipline. I was able to uh, get second medal in the world in uh, women's speed downhill in 2017. This goes for the next, uh, the next uh, speech. Um, Sorry, I'm back to speed. So, if you look at if we look at it, we're super connected, super fast. But what does it mean for us, right? 
how what does it mean for our emotions? Do we have time for for our emotions to digest them, to really find them? And and here I wanted to introduce the concept of time. So in 2014, I decided to move to Argentina for one year. And I'm about to leave, and I'm super <laughs> excited but scared at the same time when you're about to cross the ocean for your first time alone, right? And, uh, and I tell my mom, I'm scared with us today. <laughs> uh, I tell my mom, uh, I'm super scared, uh, like, I'm super scared, we're gonna be so far. And she tells me, at your age, when I moved to New York, we couldn't Skype, we had to send letters, I had to send letters to, to my mom, right? And this made me really reflect about the fact that you had, you have, like, you have this time that you sit down, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna think about what happened, and then you write down what happened, what happened inside you, right? Your emotions, and you have all this time to, to digest it. Um, and in Argentina, for me, it was particularly interesting, because I relearned the concept of time. In general, in the emerging market where I could experience and live, there's so much time for everything. But it's not that they have more time. It's they use time differently. In this part of the world, we're always late. I don't know how we're able to do that. <laughs> but we're always late, we're always running, we're always in the next thing. And we're always comparing each other to the other people who got the promotion before us, who got the degree before us, the house, the kids, and we're always like, man, I'm, I'm so late, I'm so late, and we're not, we're not here, we're not in the thing, right? In general, at least, my first experience encountering this presence here in the now was in Argentina, because there was no certainty about the tomorrow, right? It's not easy to live in a situation like this easier for us as human beings to project and to make plans, this kind of like certainty, right? But still, for me, it was a huge learning because it was super surprising coming from Switzerland to Argentina and then sharing, I don't know, do you want to go to the cinema next week? And I'm like, yes, that's not good. Does it, next week? Does it even exist, right? So it was beautiful to relearn the power of, of now, to be here, be present. And we are, this is me in Argentina, um, we are connected and at the same time we are disconnected, right? What does it mean? It means that there is always an intermediary between us unless we, there is this human relationship. So before, of course, the interaction was person to person and now most of our interactions, think about it you're at the during the day, it's person, screen, screen, person. Mostly now with COVID and we're having all these calls online, meetings online, right? And this, this filter, this, uh, this screen is actually a filter. Uh, it's a powerful tool, like we can access huge knowledge. We can navigate the web, we can have access to, the, if you think about it, the, the, the whole human knowledge is online, right? And we can connect to everywhere and we can talk to everyone. But at the same time, it's a filter. So let's, let's think about, for example, hate speech. Hate speech online is so easy because you're anonymous, right? It's so much different when you meet someone and you have to hate them in the face. When you're online, you're anonymous. You can even hate ideas. You can hate you because you're a woman. You can hate you because of your religion, of your background. Right? So for me, the real power of this digitalized world is the ability to create human connections outside of the digital itself. So one of, one of my main, um, let's say, takeaways in these years of the internet was couch surfing. Uh, some of you might know it. It's a platform where people who have a spare bed or a spare sofa, they just they just welcome you at your at your at their place, right? And I traveled the whole South America, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay. I traveled all the Balkans, uh, Albania, Kosovo, and then Israel, Italy. Ever, pretty much everywhere I've been, I used couchsurfing because it was a tool for me to meet the local people and create.
negates this human connections. The screen, I wanted to bring here this artwork. It's a screen uh, produced by um, Fabio Mauri. Fabio Mauri is a famous Italian artist. I used to work for him when I moved to Rome. And um, he's one of the most prominent voices in the Italian post-war artistic period. And he produces his screen. So his store itself, he was born and raised during fascism. And then fascism collapsed, right? So all his ideologies collapsed as well. And he's so lost that he needs some ideology. So he goes into, into religion. He becomes a priest. And then again, he has these strong ideologies. And then he realizes that it's all for him in, in his mind. It's all fake, and we need to be crit, crit, we need to criticize those ideologies. We need to go further. We need to go beyond. So his idea of the screen is always representing okay, what what there's beyond these ideologies, and he represents the screen as empty because it's the possible projection of uh, of everything, of every new beginning, and. Talking about new beginnings, um, in 2019, I really needed a new beginning in my life, so I moved to Africa, where I produced this documentary. I briefly wanted to show you some um, some footage. Um, and people always ask me, how do you live in Africa? And it's a funny question for me because you live like anywhere else. <laughs> um, but in the sense that the people are very curious, they don't know what's happening there. Uh, Africa is huge. It's like uh, 54 countries, different religions. It's like more thousand than 1,000 spoken languages. So it's very different. And uh, well, I moved to, to Ivory Coast. We shoot this documentary. It's about the Ghanaian startup producing vaccines for animals. So again, thanks to uh, thanks to the, this digitalized world, we were able to raise her voice and to be seen, uh, seeing what's happening there and uh, how we can deal with it. Um, so in general, uh, let's say this digital world can give voices to people who don't have it naturally because they don't have access. Um, and um, in Africa, at one point, I used to work for a, for a Swiss educational company that invests in tech startups in the emerging markets. And uh, at one point, I'm uh, having a bad day at work. I don't remember why. I just had a bad day. Sorry. Need to. <laughs> I'm having a bad day, uh, don't remember what happened exactly, and uh, I was super upset. I'm walking home, right? It's a, Abidjan, it's a beautiful city, it's very green, it's built on a lagoon, but still, it's an African city, so you have this many sewer, you're walking in the street, it's all dusty, right? So you're like lost in your negative thoughts. And, uh, and there's a girl in the street, and she's uh, wearing this beautiful wax, and she's carrying her baby in, on her back, right? And I think she's saying goodbye to someone. And then this someone replies something, and she started laughing. And she's laughing like crazy. She's filling the whole road with her laugh, right? And she really made me smile. And I thought, why? Like, I had, today, I had a hot shower, I had a warm meal, I had a clean toilet, and I had a roof. There is nothing to be upset or worried or anything about it, right? And she, like, I realized in this moment how contagious was her laugh, how a smile can be contagious, uh, a laugh, an act of kindness. Everything we give is contagious, so even when we give negative, we receive also negative. Right? So let's contaminate the world with love and with uh, creativity and uh, with all these beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, weapons, if I can say, love weapons, right? Um, so before 
uh, Maria Chiara mentioned that spirituality comes from it inspirare, that is our root of respirare, so our uh, breath. And um, this spirare actually is a, it's a light blow, like, right? It's the blow that means we are actually alive. So our body is alive because it's blowing. And it makes me think about, well, I studied ancient Greek, and in Greek you say psyche, right? This is the root of uh, psyche. <laughs> yeah, I was very bad at pronouncing Greek. <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the idea is uh, that there was no disconnection between body and soul. In the ancient Greek uh, mythology, there the, the unique thing there is the body with the with the blow and then there's the body that is dead there's no separation oh, this is spiritual and this is material that is a huge separation that we have in our modern society right but I wanted to talk about this myth of Amore e Psyche it's a speech by Canova that is in St. Petersburg that I went to see one of my favorites uh, stage works of art, and the story of this myth represents the soul that's seeking the love, and with this love, with the God, Cupid is the God, um, it's reuniting with the divine unity, right? Divine unity, what is the divine unity? What is for you the divine unity? For me, it's nature. It's nature because it's an incubator and source of life. And for me, being spiritual is being able to experience nature in, in its own manifestation. So when I am, um, for example, when I'm surfing a wave, I am myself. I'm becoming myself the wave. Or when I'm hiking or sailing, I'm, I'm becoming the wind. Or when I'm swimming underwater, I am this endless blue sea that I can't, I can't see the end. And then, of course, when I'm skiing, that is my favorite, <laughs> I'm becoming the mountain and pure and light and immense, right? So it's this, it's this, for me, in this moment, my soul is actually touching this immensity. And somehow, um, it became kind of, kind of like a life call to me to make uh, more women experiencing nature, empowering them. So I, I launched my business, Girls Went Out, and the idea was to bring more women into nature because it was it's spiritual for me, and I want them to be able to feel free in the nature and to experience all the nature manifestation. Um, so we live in a world where I believe digital should be a tool for us to reinvest in human connection. And for me, this spiritual side is what I found in nature. But of course, my call for you today is to really understand what is spiritual for you, what is really that touches your soul. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, I will say goodbye to the people in the streaming session. And maybe we have also to stop it here. And I think we can finish with Adia.